Hey everybody, this is Brett Grayson of Tactical Pay Radio, reminding you that the podcast you're listening to is a proud member of the Self-Defense Radio Network. Check out all the great content at selfdefenseradio.net. Welcome to Unload and Show Clear, the podcast about all things IDPA. And now, here's your host, living proof that without practice, there's no limit to how little you can accomplish, Lloyd Bailey. Welcome to another episode of Unload and Show Clear, where we counter the media's negative image of gun culture by introducing you to the amazing men and women who are involved in IDPA, International Defensive Pistol Association. We're focusing on people, not politics. The everyday people from all walks of life, men and women who volunteer their time and effort, who spend their hard-earned dollars on travel, match fees, and gear to make this sport great. They're your doctors. They clean your teeth. They're fixing your houses, taking care of your pets. They fix your computers and pilot your planes, and they protect our streets and our nation. They are gun culture at its finest, and it's misunderstood or completely unknown to the mainstream media. Today, I'm going to introduce you to another one of these awesome people. But first, I want to thank today's sponsor. I found my friends Dave and Reagan Williams at Salina Gun Shop when I needed an FFL transfer for a firearm. Several years ago, they were just a tabletop FFL. Well, since that time, they have grown into a one-stop shop for guns, ammo, accessories, gunsmithing, custom engraving, and they are a certified Cerakote applicator. Whether it's a custom build, engraving, or Cerakote, no matter how mild or how wild you want your firearm, no matter what you need, they can handle it. Now, I've taken them older guns that have bad, scratched-up finishes. Salina Gun Shop made them look like new. When my wife wanted a her own Glock 19, I had Salina Gun Shop Cerakote the frame to just the right color that she wanted. I've had them install new sights on my guns, do repairs and trigger work on my revolvers. I trust them with my guns, and you can too. I cannot recommend them highly enough. Check them out today at salinagunshop.com. That's C-E-L-I-N-A gunshop.com. Look for a link in the show notes to get to their website. Or if you're here in North Texas, stop by and visit them in person at 701 North Preston Road, Suite 310 in Salina, Texas. Salinagunshop.com. Small town store, big town service. Salinagunshop.com. Our special guest today is Jay Heil from Evansville, Indiana. Jay, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks for having me. Well, you are. You know, we were just uh, kind of joking before we got started. You were probably the fourth or the fifth person from Evansville who's been on the show. Evansville has has more guests than than many states do. <laughs> Who knew Evansville was such a hotbed of IDPA? Uh, we did. <laughs> um, you know, we're able to. Uh, to keep two clubs going, uh, there's a there's a lot of great shooters here. Uh, I, I believe uh, when we went to Illinois uh, a couple of months ago, I think 20 of our shooters were over there. Holy cow, that's amazing! So tell us a little about yourself. Uh, tell us what you do for a living in Evansville. Uh, I work for a consulting engineering firm. I'm a mechanical designer. Uh, spend all day on the CAD. <laughs> um, I've been doing that since I was 21. Um, native of Indiana? Uh, yes. Uh, I was born in Richmond, Virginia when my father was in uh, the Navy. Uh, and, and we were back here before I turned two. Okay. Parents born and raised here. Gotcha. So growing up, uh, from two in, in Indiana, I guess, introduced to guns early on or, or was this something that you came across later in life? I always had access to guns, but it was mostly my dad's 22 rifle. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, I got a BB gun when I was seven and promptly got it taken away from me <laughs> uh, at about an hour. Um, You'll shoot your eye out. So I always had that. Yeah, I, and I tried. Um, I really didn't spend a lot of time with guns. We shot, like I said, I shot my father's 22 quite a bit, but uh, we never had handguns until my mother bought my dad a, 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 a Colt Trooper 
357. Uh, I believe it was in 79. That was my first real experience with a handgun. I had had a BB gun, handgun, but uh, a pistol. But uh, the um, the 357 was the first time I'd ever really handled a a, a pistol. How old were you then? Uh, that was, I was probably 16. Okay. Okay. So your introduction was with, was with wheel guns. Did you, uh, how did you uh, go from there to competitive shooting? How did you find out about competitive shooting? Well, that was kind of a long process. Uh, <laughs> when I, when I got my first job in engineering, I, I worked with a bunch of guys that were, let's just say gun fanatics. Um, and I ended up getting my, uh, my carry permit picked up a couple of a couple of cheap handguns to carry. I won't mention any names because I'm embarrassed by them. Um, <laughs> and after after a few years, I ended up letting my concealed carry lapse because it was a little bit of a pain to get uh, a carry permit. You had to prove that you needed it and all that stuff. And this was back in the '90s, so I kind of let it lapse, and uh, I started getting back into guns. Uh, probably about 2005 and, um, uh, picked up, uh, picked up another handgun, a couple more rifles and, and joined a, a local gun club in 2009. And, uh, when I joined that club, they had a committee. That's, that's what they called the groups in this club. They called them committees, whether it was spot shoot or, or a trap committee or whatever. And they had one called combat and that seemed kind of interesting to me. So I ended up joining it. And it was very pistol centric, um, but it it kind of ran by its own rules. Something that had been made up in the in the seventies, mm-hmm. and it was very difficult to get people to come to matches. Um, and me and another gentleman um, took that committee over at the end of uh, two thousand eleven. And uh, this guy's name is Jim Woodard, and he drug me to Redbrush. Uh, to see IDPA. He had been shooting it for a couple of months. So he drug me up there <laughs> and I, I see, you know, 40, 50 people in December up there. I'm like, okay, this is kind of cool. <laughs> uh, and, and I think I shot the, 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 the next match, which would have been January. Actually, I kind of looked around on the range and I, and I didn't own a Glock at the time. Um, and that's what I shoot now, but I look around and I see all these guys running uh, Kydex holsters and Glocks, and I had an old Ruger P89 and a, and a leather <laughs> pancake holster. Right. Um, so I went, ran right out and bought me a, a LE trade-in uh, Glock 22. Uh, unbeknownst to me, it had a New York trigger in it. Oh. Uh, I, I didn't find that out for quite some time because I never took it apart. Um you just thought anyway, all Glock triggers were that bad? Yeah, I thought all Glock triggers were 12 pounds. <laughs> um, so, you know, I shot shot up there, and and we started running outlaw matches at, uh, at Westside Sportsman's Club, which is the club I joined, uh, until we got enough in the bank where we could start building targets and and paying for the sanctioning or the uh, – uh, the, the fee to IDPA. Um, I think in between there, I had actually become a safety officer. They, they did, they had different rules back then. Uh, I was only a member of IDPA for about four months bef- when I got my uh, first SO class. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, Scott Hurd is the one that taught me. Oh, okay. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's kind of how it happened. We, we kind of fell into it. Uh, just looking for something to do at, at Westside. Okay. And what was, do you, uh, do you remember the first local, uh, the, the first club match that you ran at, at Westside that was IDPA instead of the outlaw? Yeah, it was probably the, the, the next spring. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, we didn't start running matches until probably in the summertime, and we didn't run them all year, if I remember right. Um, but, uh, you know, the next, the next spring we, uh, we came out of winter and, uh, got our, uh, got our affiliation through IDPA and started running matches. Um, I remember them being very stressful. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're trying to, we're trying to run matches on a, on a, on a range that really wasn't built for it. Mm-hmm. Um, so we were shooting in corners of, of, uh, 
a cowboy town berm. Oh. Um, we, we can only put up four stages and, and we were having to shoot, you know, two stages in a corner. Um, I believe at the end of that first year, we had made enough money to we got a, actually got a little uh, dirt work done. So we had four corners to shoot in instead of <laughs> just two. Um, so how has uh, how has Westside changed since then? What is um, and, and how have the matches changed? Did 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 those matches squeezed into the corners of bays? Did they attract more shooters? Did did people start taking to it? What was the reaction from what was the reaction from your members? Um, our, our some of our members came out, but we had a lot of people that were coming to the Red Brush um, uh, matches. Come to our matches. Now they had two 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 weekends a month they could shoot. <laughs> right. So so you know we had a ready made. Uh, a uh, bunch of people ready to ready to come and shoot our matches. Uh, as, as far as the range, we we spent like three years uh, shooting like that, and the club was going through a transition from a from a good old boys uh, social club to a more of a gun club, mm-hmm. and um, the board of directors changed, and we got a really progressive um, uh, chairman. Uh, and progressive board and they looked at the range and realized that uh, we didn't have enough shooting facility we, we literally had a six foot long shooting line that you could shoot 10 yards uh, on the rifle range that was the pistol range oh, wow. and then and then we had like a 25 yard uh, berm a 50 yard berm and a 100 yard berm and, and this was only in about i don't know 75 80 feet 90 feet maybe Mm. Uh, of, of, of shooting line. Uh, the cowboy town, uh, was a very good cowboy town. We've got a really strong cowboy group in, in, in at West side. Uh, they have, uh, their, uh, nationals, uh, in cows nationals, uh, for the last, I don't know, 11 years or something at, at our, at our facility. Uh, but anyway, we got the, we got the progressive board and they looked at the range and said, you know, we can do so much more if we spend a little bit of money. And uh, they spent the money and they gave us uh, six event bays and six uh, uh, block pistol bays. Um, so we increased our, our shooting facility by more than double uh, in, in uh, I believe it was 16 uh, okay. when we opened it. So for you as a shooter, how long after you, you started running matches um, you'd switched over from your, these outlaw matches to IDPA. You started, um, growing your, your IDPA club. How long after that, before you ventured out and tried your hand at, at a sanction match? Uh, it was 2014. Okay. Um, I went to a, uh, to a, to a match in Gallatin, Tennessee. Uh, it's called Steam Plant. I believe it was the first year they had it. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I really didn't know what to expect. Uh, <laughs> I, I got down there, and uh, and of course, Brad was Brad Edens was down there, and, and a handful of our local guys. Um, and I squatted with them guys, and uh, really didn't put up good numbers. But it was it was the first it was the first match. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody's got to have one, right? Um, and I think I shot two more matches that year, and then didn't shoot anything else until sixteen. Oh wow! What uh, what happened in between? Uh, that was in twenty fourteen. What happened in twenty fifteen? And and uh, why did uh, how were you able to get back at it in twenty sixteen? Well, I, I I was spending a lot of time. Uh, with the construction portion of of putting that club back together, uh, West Side. Uh, so I just I, I stepped back from uh, doing anything like that until we got the the plans in place and started dirt work. Um, that's how I remember it anyway. <laughs> that's your story, and you're sticking to it. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sticking to it because yeah, I you know I, I wasn't really happy with the the. the um, the, the three matches I shot in 14, I didn't feel I did very well. Mm-hmm. So what did you do in that year or, or that span of time from your last match and your last sanctioned match in 2014 to what made you 
say, okay, I'm ready to get back at it in 2016. What did you do in between to prepare to go back to competition? You know, it just shot local matches. I really, I mean, up until the last couple of years, I didn't even really practice that much. I'd go out and shoot with friends, but I, I didn't really, you know, I didn't do a lot of dry fire. I, I didn't do a lot of stage uh, set up, uh, you know, and go out and run stages or anything like that. I just, I was just shooting for fun. Mm. Uh, and that's, that's about all it was. Okay. Well, you know, um, what was it? Scott Longhorn, our, our, our guest from, from Iowa said that, you know, he feels like practices for people who are trying to be perfect. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say I, I, you know, I have started practicing, not not nearly as much as I should, <laughs> but uh, I have started. Well, what is it they say IDPA stands for? I don't practice anymore. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. Um, so, what is your favorite division at this point? You say you shoot Glocks, but uh, what what division do you participate in most often? Well, I've jumped around a lot in the last year, year and a half. Um, I, I shot CCP for a couple of years and then I bounced around. I've shot CDP and ESP. Um, but I really enjoy bug. I really enjoy shooting that. And I, I'm not, I don't have the opportunity to shoot it very much. Right. Um, we shot, a, an indoor match that ended up not getting sanctioned over in Missouri, uh, St. Louis area. And I shot bug, uh, and I'm actually signed up for uh, bug at worlds. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. What is it about uh, about that division that that excites you? What is it you like about it so much? Yeah, I I, I think I shoot the twenty six pretty well, uh, I, and I guess that's that's it. I I, I like the, the gun. I like the I like the differing stage plan a little bit um, you know, from from an eight eight plus one or a ten plus one. I, I enjoy the six. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I guess that's just it. It's, it's a different stage plan. Right. It's, it, and it's also, I guess, um, more closely aligned with, with what you carry. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I don't carry the 26 very often. I, I generally carry the 40, 43 or the, or the 19. Okay. Um, so it's just the, just the math. Okay, cool. Because I'm thinking about taking it up or trying it myself. Have you ever have you ever gone back to um, Have you ever tried your hand at, at revolver where you got your start? I have not. <laughs> I have not. Um, I, I I want to. I just haven't. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, actually, a, a good good friend of mine was making fun of me the other day. Uh, <laughs> he said you need to quit switching divisions. And I, and I told him I don't shoot PCC or revolver. And he says. Well, why don't you? And I said, well, Glock doesn't make those yet. <laughs> Good answer. I like it. Um, so since you got back at it in 2016, is there a match that you went to that, that stands out in your mind that, that was, that really impressed you that, that you had, where you had a lot of fun or something really bizarre happened that stands out a funny story or an interesting story from, from one of the sanctioned matches since you got back at it in 2016? Um, the, uh, the backstoppers matches ha- have always had a, had a special spot for me because I, they really do a good job of match uh, design or stage design. And, and uh, it, they just look, the stages look really good. Uh, they're always very well thought out. I look forward to that match every year. Um, that's probably one of my most favorite matches mm-hmm. uh, that I've shot. And of course they didn't have it this year. They had to cancel it. Um, uh, but there was a funny story when I got back in, uh, in 16, um, once again, Jim Woodard drug me to a match. Uh, he had gone to the Illinois match the year before and, uh, and worked. And, uh, we had met the, uh, the Illinois, uh, uh, area coordinator who was also an SOI and we got him to come over and do our SO training because we couldn't get one out of Indiana because mm-hmm. they were all up North and he was actually closer than, than those guys were anyway. So we actually had him come over. And, uh, when I met him, he said, you know, why don't you come over and work the match? So anyway, Jim drags me over there and, uh, it was a two day match. Um, so we get over there at like, uh, 
I don't know, noon, something like that, 11 o'clock, we'll start shooting at noon. And we were under a torrential downpour. I know, hard to believe it's Sparta, Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we finally get to start shooting, and we get about halfway through, but they had to, they had to stop one of the bays because uh, it was underwater. It was the, the, the last bay. And uh, so we come back the next morning and shoot, and uh, we get to that bay, and it's backed up. There's like four squads at this bay now <sighs> trying to get through. Uh, it's our last one. It's, uh, you know, two other squads, it's their last one. So there's two squads on it. And uh, we were real close to our cars, so we went over and, and uh, pulled out the chairs out of the cars and sat down and started uh, just to relax a little bit. And um, the uh, match director of Prairie Dell was there with one of his hunting dogs. Uh, mm-hmm. This guy's name is uh, David Burke. And he hadn't even announced his match yet. Uh, he announced it at this match. And uh, his dog is tied up to, to his car. And so we go over and we're sitting there. And... Uh, Kevin Farrar's with us. Um, Mike Basin's with us. Um, Brad Edens and Scott Hurt were actually on the range that day. They weren't in our squad. And uh, and I hear these guys scream, and I turn around and look, and this dog has hiked up his leg and is peeing in my vest pocket. It's, it's hanging on the back of the chair. <laughs> okay. okay, now I'm going to pause for all the giggling. Sorry. All right. So, you know, everybody's, you know, of course, Kevin takes pictures of it. He immediately puts it on Facebook. Of course. Um, and then somebody goes over and tells Jim he's actually on the, on the bay helping. And uh, it's, it's almost like the, remember the scene in uh, Greece where uh, everybody's in the, in, in the drive-in and the cars are leaning over. People are talking between the cars mm-hmm. as Rizzo goes by. That's what this range looked like. It's everybody talking down the range. So by the time we get done shooting, everybody on the range knew my vest got peed in. <laughs> uh, so I get back up to the pavilion, and there's Scott and Brad sitting there. And, and of course, Brad says something to the effect of, you smell something? <laughs> and no, I left that vest in the car. <laughs> so we all kind of gather up there, and, uh, and here comes Dave Burke. And somebody had found out that that was his dog. And he says, and they tell him that, uh, that his dog peed in my vest. And Dave says, well, that's the only trick the dog knows. <laughs> and so they start asking questions about the dog. Well, the dog's name happens to be easy. So you can imagine all the jokes. Uh, I think the next week, Kevin gave me an easy button uh, patch to go on my vest. That sounds like him. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's fantastic. So you, you didn't, so what did you do for a cover garment for the, fortunately you only had one stage left, right? Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I had one stage. I borrowed. <laughs> yeah, I, I borrowed. Big borrower steal as long as you don't use the one that's been peed on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've actually retired that vest. I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I debated on whether or not to tell that story, but it is actually the funniest story I have. <laughs> it's a good one. That is the best one I've heard yet. Uh, so, um, so now you're you're running you're running your local matches. You've been doing uh, uh, from from the beginning when you guys started the club, uh, started shooting IDPA. Were you? directing the local matches or were you sharing those responsibilities with some other people? Uh, we were sharing the responsibilities. Um, they kind of put me in charge of the committee. So I was answering to the board of directors for uh, anything that happened and, and, you know, in charge of, of taking care of the, the budgeting and stuff like that. But we had three or four guys that would put together matches and it, and that has stayed pretty well consistent over the over the last what, eight nine years. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we we have a good group of people, so we only have to run one or two matches a, a year as an individual, and and that means you know you don't have to put together all of the um, all the course of fire and, and things like that. So everybody can have their spin, their type of match. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and it makes it a little bit easier, or it makes it a little bit more 
uh, interesting for the shooters, I think. Right. That it's, that it's not just one person's spin on an IDPA match. Right. Very good. That's good that you've, it's nice having, having that many people who are willing and able to, to chip in and help out. How long before, um, how about long b- before you got out and actually SO'd other people's, um, uh, sanctioned matches or were you doing that from the start? Well, it was 16. It was that Illinois match was the first one I, uh, okay. I worked. Um, after that, um, no, I shot, I shot two matches at 16. I, I went and shot Prairie Dell with, you know, that was Dave Burke's match. Um, despite I, I him, not work despite his dog defiling your, <laughs> yes, despite, um, yeah, my wife found out about that. And when, when he came up for the first havoc, my wife made sure that, uh, Dave got his dog out so we could have uh, a picture taken with. So my wife posted me and me and easy on, on Facebook, on her account. Very um, nice. <laughs> but, uh, no, we, we shot, you know, I worked that match. Uh, and I've worked every Illinois match since then. Um, met Stan Hine there. Uh, I believe that was in 17, uh, worked with him. Um, and, and really the only couple of matches that I, I work are, are, uh, the Illinois match and the Prairie Dell match and then Havoc, of course. All right. Have you, uh, when you're, when you're working matches, as opposed to just going out and shooting them, you're, you're shooting the, the, usually the day before the match, you're not, it's not quite the same. There's sometimes there's some tweaking going on. What's the, um, what's the secret to shooting well when you've got a week's worth of, of stage building and prep and all that stuff going on, and then you've got to shoot a match, and then the very next day you've got to go and, and work that match. Um, is, there a, is there a different kind of mindset that you take with you to the match as a, when you're working it as opposed to when you're shooting, just shooting it? Or do you find it easier or harder? What's, what's the trick to doing it and doing it well? Um, with Illinois and Prairie Dell, I have not had to go over and help them set up. I just show up on staff day and shoot Mm -hmm. work the next day. So everything's pretty well ironed out. Um, the groups around here tend to do a a pretty good job of getting everything vetted out before the SOs get there. So they'll, they'll have a, uh, a senior staff shoot it the day before and get pretty well everything worked out. So I've been pretty lucky with that. Well, but with Havoc, um, the first year that we had it, the senior staff shot with the staff. Um, so we all shot it on Friday. So there was a little bit of tweaking, not too bad. Kevin did a real good job of getting everything ironed out prior to us getting there. Um, but last year we decided to do a, a senior staff. So there was four of us that shot, uh, on Thursday and we were still setting stuff up on Thursday at, I think one o'clock, uh, still trying to set stuff up. We barely got finished before dark shooting, uh, and that was that was difficult. Um, but I think we all did pretty well. I think Kevin Kevin actually won his division. Um, I think Doug won uh, something in marksman CCP. Uh, but uh, that one was probably the most difficult one I've had to do, uh, just because we were tr- we're trying to get it done mm-hmm. before it got dark. Uh, we got a late start and that was part of the problem, but I, to answer your question, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, it's just, just go out and shoot. Yep. Um, What's, um, what is it about working matches? I, I have only done limited amounts of SOing at local matches. What is it about, and I've never done a sanctioned match. What is it about it? That, there's a number of people that we've talked to who, that's all they do. They don't, they've, they've gotten to a point where they either, they've worked every match that they've ever, or every sanctioned match that they've ever shot, or they, once they started working uh, sanctioned matches, they, they, they never shoot. They just go and they, they work and they shoot. Mm-hmm. Um, what is it about it that, that is, um, that you enjoy? What, what is it that if someone th- was thinking to themselves, you know, that might be interesting, but it sounds like it's a lot of work. What is it, what would you tell them is, you know, what do you enjoy about doing that? Uh, A couple of things. Um, I think it'll make you a better shooter. 
I think it will make you a better shooter because you get to see 100, 150 people shoot a stage um, from from master to novice. Mm -hmm. Uh, You get to see how everybody stage plans it. Um, You have to field a lot of questions about uh, how they're thinking. So you you get a lot of you got to get a lot of uh, of of knowledge uh, from other people. Mm -hmm. But the thing that I like most is I get to I get to see every every shooter. Right. And I think that's I think that's neat. Uh, Yeah. Meet everybody. That's true. That's that's one of the that's when you're just going to a match to shoot. It's it's. It's hard to, to, you always come away from a match like that and say, oh man, I meant to speak to so-and-so, right? Mm-hmm. And you get a chance as, a, as an SO, you get a chance to see everybody when they come through your stage. That's great. Great point. So what is it about this? I mean, you, you, you've worked to, you know, head this committee at your, your home club and build up from, from almost nothing to where you're you're now hosting uh, and we'll have you back on at another another time to talk about the the holiday havoc but what is it and, and you've over all these years you've now dedicated a lot of time to not only building up your home club but going out and helping other people run their matches uh, we met at the Illinois State um, this year and uh, and as you said you you now go out and and shoot these matches but you you don't just shoot you go and work all of them why is it what is it about IDPA that you love so much that you would devote yourself so much to this what is so great about IDPA um i'll give you the answer that i that i started with which is when i started shooting uh IDPA and, and the outlaw matches back way back then is, is it was a little bit of practice for concealed carry mm. um but it's 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 evolved way beyond that. You know, I, I've met some really great people. Um, a couple of guys that I'm really close to, uh, I would consider them lifelong friends now. Um, uh, the, the 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 people that you meet um, are just some of the best people in the world. Um, well, by the way, I don't run that committee anymore. Doug is saddled with that. <laughs> Pawned it off on him. Yes, I did. Yes, yes, I did. <laughs> well, I get what you're saying about uh, you. When it reminds me of again to bring up Scott Longhorn when he when he told us that you know once you once you make IDPA friends, you realize just how lame your old friends were really were. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> All right. Well. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing. I really enjoyed meeting you, even though I shot a non-thread on your stage at, uh, at, at Illinois. Thank you for taking the time to come on the show. I'm looking forward to having you back on to talk about the havoc, Jay. All right. I wasn't going to bring up the non-thread. <laughs> well, you might as well. I mean, it is part of my <laughs> kind of the nom de guerre. It's, it's sort of what I do. I, I've, hit, I've hit a few myself. <laughs> Honorary member of the Non-Threat Assassin Squad. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, it's, been a, it's been an honor uh, speaking with you. Well, I appreciate it, and I'm looking forward to seeing you at the Havoc. We'll have a spot for you. All right, that's all the time we have for today. I want to thank our guests for coming on the show and our sponsors for making all of this possible. Take a moment, if you would, to check out the website, check out our show notes at unloadpodcast.com. We've got lots of interviews with more amazing guests like the one you heard today. Join our Facebook group at unloadpodcast.com slash Facebook for all the latest updates and to connect with other fans of the show. And if you'd like to support the show, we sure would appreciate it. Consider becoming a patron at unloadpodcast.com slash extra. I've got some full-length interviews and special content available there exclusively for patrons as well. And if you know somebody or you yourself would make an interesting guest for a future episode of Unload and Show Clear, please contact me at lloyd at unloadpodcast.com or click on the contact page on the website and send us a message. We'd love to hear from you. 
Tune in again next time for another episode of Unload and Show Clear.